This episode of Super Carlin Brothers is brought to you by Loot Crate. Hey, brother! Quick warning, this video will contain spoilers for Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Ugh! Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Personally, we loved it, but it did leave us with a lot of questions or things that maybe didn't seem to totally add up. And the big one I keep seeing so many people talk about, even though it is a fairly small plot point in the movie, is the appearance of none other than Professor McGonagall. And you might be thinking, well, sure, we see her in a couple of scenes and it was like fun to see her, but what's the big deal? And I agree, when I watched it the first time, I thought, oh, that's just a fun little bit of fan service, a polite nod to the present day wizarding world we all know and love. And yet, the problem is, when you go back and think about it, you realize that this movie takes place in 1927 and that Professor McGonagall hasn't even been born yet. <laughs> Okay, so maybe you are a savvy Potter researcher and you've been on Pottermore and you know that it lists McGonagall's birth date, but not her birth year. So you might be thinking, uh, Jay, how do you know when she was born? To which I say, gosh, I sure love it when you ask exactly the question I want you to ask. It's almost like I wrote the words for you to ask myself. When actually Ben did. Okay, so let's read between some lines here because this date is totally figuratively out of belief. Uh, totally able to be figured, you know what I mean. Despite not much information about her being available in the main series books, we actually know a ton about Minerva McGonagall's life. And not from the movies, like this little Easter egg right here, where it looks like she played Quidditch with James Potter. Which, no she didn't, this is actually factually inaccurate on two counts. One, because James played Chaser and not Seeker, and two, because McGonagall is way older than this. And yes, that's way with an H. In fact, she may be even way, way older than this, but more on that later. In the actual books that actually count though, it's a blink and you miss a detail from Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, but it happens when Dolores Umbridge is interviewing McGonagall about whether or not she should remain teaching. She asks, how long have you been teaching at Hogwarts? And she responds, 39 years this December. And that is something we can work with. Order of the Phoenix takes place in 1996, and all we have to do is subtract 39, and that lands us in 1957 for when she started working at Hogwarts. But even then, it's like, well, we don't know when she started working at Hogwarts relative to when she graduated, so does that really give us a date? But that is where you were wrong. We actually do have that information because there is an ebook on Pottermore called Heroism, Hardships, and Dangerous Hobbies. And in this book, there is actually an entire chapter dedicated dedicated to McGonagall's early life. Like, for example, we learned that upon graduating Hogwarts, she fell in love with a local muggle man, Dougal McGregor, who has the best name ever. Dougal actually even got as far as proposing to her, and she said yes. Aww. But then she broke it off literally one day later because she didn't want to hide her magic from him. Aw, man. So, instead of marrying Dougal McGregor, she takes a job at the Ministry of Magic in the Magical Law Enforcement Office where she would work for two years. And as you might expect, she was quite gifted at her job. And after just two years, she was offered a nice promotion, at which point she said no, because anytime someone offers McGonagall something nice, she's like, see ya. No, instead, that is when she decided to send an owl to Hogwarts to see if they could offer her a teaching position. She got the owl back later that day saying, yes, she could be hired. And as a position under Professor Dumbledore, the head of the Transfiguration Department, which first of all is, Odd, because I don't remember any professor in any Harry Potter book having an assistant at all, or even being the head of the department. Whatever, the point is she worked at the ministry for two years after she graduated Hogwarts, so that's 17 years of age minus 1955. That brings us to 1938, the year she was born. Over 10 years after the events of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. And yet, in the movie, we see her as a teacher at Hogwarts Hogwarts twice, first in Dumbledore's classroom and then again in the flashback to Lita and Newt taking place in like 1914 or 15. Like McGonagall, I know you're really magical and stuff, but being 20 years old before you're born is like really impressive. And I know what you're thinking, uh, Jay, don't you think it was probably just one of her relatives? And again, thank you so much for asking the exact 
question I wanted you to. Because she is definitely not one of her relatives. Minerva McGonagall was born a half-blood to the Reverend Robert McGonagall, or as I like to call him, Bob Gonagall, and witch mother, Isabel Ross. And the two married very young, Isabel was just 18. Not only that, Bob, as you might have been able to figure out, was a muggle with no knowledge that his wife, Isabel, was actually a very talented witch. Got a real Seamus Finnegan situation going on here, don't we? But that's a muggle. Mom's a witch. Bit of a nasty shock for him when he found out. I should note that nowhere does it actually call him Bob, but I'm gonna keep doing it because I think it's funny. Anyway, when Isabel and Bob fell in love, she went to the extent of locking her wand away beneath her bed to hide her magic from him. And she would keep this secret until well after the birth of their first child, Minerva, and she eventually decided she had to reveal the secret because Minerva was starting to show signs of magic and she didn't want him to walk in and see her doing something out of the ordinary. If you're keeping track though, that means her mother, Isabel, didn't do any magic again until 1938 when her daughter was born. The point I'm trying to make is that Isabel Ross wouldn't have had the last name McGonagall until after she was married, which she did right out of Hogwarts, and then she didn't practice any magic again until 1938, well after the events of this movie. So the McGonagall we see in the movie cannot possibly be Minerva's mother. But what about her grandmother, I hear you saying? And you're not wrong, that's a track we went down as well. And in fact, Minerva McGonagall, the one we know, was named after her grandmother on her mother's side. And she was known to be a talented witch, so for a second I thought that might be it, except, of course, she wouldn't have the last name McGonagall, she'd have the last name Ross. In order for the McGonagall we saw in Crimes of Grindelwald to have the last name McGonagall, she has to have come from the father's side of the family, so maybe it was one of Bob's sisters or something, it was an aunt, but again, no. Because remember, Bob is muggle-born, and the first time he ever learns about magic is when his wife tells him she's a witch. And certainly if he had magical sisters, he would have at least known about the existence of the wizarding world ahead of time, right? Like on Petunia. Mother and father were so proud that we have a witch in the family. Isn't it wonderful? So here's where things get interesting though, because despite everything we've just said, I'm convinced that the woman we see in the movie is in fact Minerva McGonagall, the one we know who eventually goes on to teach Harry Potter. But how is that possible if we've just established that she wasn't born yet? How does one exist before one was born? Do you see where we are going? That's right, time turn. Yeah, okay, so I don't love this explanation any more than you guys do, but the only other possible explanations are that one, it just happened to be a different woman with the same last name, with the same accent and mannerisms, and why on earth would you even show it to us if it's not related to the one? Or two, it was completely a mistake that somebody overlooked and now it exists in canon and we all just have to deal with it. Which, no, I refuse. I do not accept that. I mean, J.K. Rowling wrote the screenplay herself and I just don't believe that she accidentally made this huge retcon anachronistic mistake. So we're left with nothing else except time turners. But the good news is it's actually kind of cool. And before we dive into it, first let's just reestablish what the rules of time travel are in Harry Potter. It can seem pretty complicated, but it's also pretty simple. Whenever someone travels back in time, the new corrective actions they take have always already happened. Like when Harry and Hermione go back in the Prisoner of Azkaban and throw the rock through the window to alert themselves to leave the house. This happens both times, they just don't understand that it was them the first time. When Hermione howls to distract Professor Lupin, that happens both times. Things are always the way they are even before you in the present went back in time in the future. Because you already did. Right? So the question is, when did she travel back in time from? And I think we have the answer. 1957, the same year she started working at Hogwarts under Professor Dumbledore. Remember our old buddy from earlier, Dougal McGregor, who got dumped by McGonagall one day after they were engaged? Well, while Minerva was off working at the ministry, Dougal was off falling in love with some other farmer's daughter. And just after Minerva accepted the job at Hogwarts, she found out in a letter from her mother that Dougal had in fact married the other girl. Which leads to this scene, and I'm just gonna read it to you. Albus Dumbledore discovered Minerva in tears in her classroom late that evening, and she confessed the whole story to him. Albus Dumbledore offered both comfort and wisdom, and told Minerva some of his own family history previously unknown to her. The confidences exchanged that night between two intensely private and reserved characters were to form the basis of a lasting mutual esteem and friendship. Minerva McGonagall was one of only a handful of people who knew or suspected how dreadful a moment 
moment it was for Albus Dumbledore when, in 1945, he made the decision to confront and defeat the dark wizard, Gellert Grindelwald. So, heartbreak between muggle and wizard kind. Does that sound familiar to you? Because if you've seen the movie, you'll know that that is exactly the plot between Jacob and Queenie. And we see that it can be a hugely motivating factor, and it would be even doubly so for McGonagall, who one, just got heartbroken, and two, had to watch her parents go through this exact same thing. Which is why I think the conversation I just read is when Dumbledore asked McGonagall to go back in time to help him fight Grindelwald. From 1957 to 1915-ish. About 42 years. To help him fight a dark wizard who would rule over the muggles and never allow this to happen. To help him fight for a world where it is okay for wizards and muggles to get married. Ironically, this is the exact opposite action Queenie takes to accomplish the exact same goal. Go figure. In any case, I'm sure you still have a few questions, but don't worry, there are a few bases still left to cover. Like, first of all, that 40 plus years is way longer than we've ever seen a time turn or travel before. But actually, it's not. Over on Pottermore, there's actually an article about time turners where you can learn about Eloise Mintumble, who traveled almost 500 years into the past, got trapped for five days, and then eventually died upon return. Then there's the <coughs> cursed child, where they eventually invent a time turner that can travel to any point and back to the future. No problem, but you know, whatever. Point is, it is conceivably possible. The other big problem is that she's traveling to behind her birth and so would then have to hide from herself for quite some time as she aged back into the present. But again, this is pretty easily explained away. For one, if she does have a time turner that can just travel to any point in the past and then back to the present whenever you're ready, well, there you go, she'd just do it when she was done. Or, lest we forget, that McGonagall is also an animagus, and she can transform into a cat, and so could easily evade detection for years at a time, similar to Peter Pettigrew in Prisoner of Azkaban. And finally, there's the case of Minerva McGonagall's eventual husband, Elphinstone Urquhart. Remember those two years back at the Ministry? Well, during that time, Urquhart was her much older boss, who she was very fond of. And even though she left the Ministry, the two kept in touch, and actually, over time, he proposed to her several times, but she always turned him down. But really, what I find odd about the description of Elphinstone Urquhart, whose name is not nearly as good as Dougal McGregor, is that they specifically describe him as much older. My question, though, is why specify specifically that this guy who was fond of her is much older? Older. It just seems like an irrelevant detail, unless it turns out that McGonagall had traveled into the past and gained up to 10 or even 20, possibly 40 years reliving that time. Because then, fast forward to the present when she does eventually marry Urquhart, well, sure, on paper he'd be older than her, but she actually would probably be much closer to his actual age. Also, also, I just love the idea that back in 1915, at one point, Minerva McGonagall walks into young Dumbledore. Dumbledore's office and is like, Albus, my name is Minerva McGonagall. I was sent from the future by you to help you defeat dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald. Because you know Dumbledore would be like, oh cool. Which would be awesome because then future him would always be waiting for the day when in real time he would meet the crazy time traveler lady who he would then send back to help himself. <laughs> Seriously blown though. God, thinking about time travel, it hurts my head. Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Did Dumby send Mindy into the pasty to help save his face? Ah. Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. But guys, before we go, I have to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Loot Crate! Specifically, the Wizarding World Crate. I have to tell you, we used to do a lot of Loot Crate unboxes on here, and the only thing that would occasionally bum me out was that I would get stuff from franchises I wasn't a fan of, but now, I can guarantee that it is always Harry Potter! And I have to say, I was indeed very impressed. You may have noticed, I've been wearing this lovely Phoenix pin throughout the entire video, which is a Loot Crate exclusive. Plus, as always, you get shirt. Not to mention this handy, oh, um, uh, umbrella with all of the house crests on it. Really functions as a nice parasol as well. Everything good? Hair? Fine? Yeah, actually, yes it is, which I can tell because I have this handy pocket mirror of Arised. Greatest desires not included in reflection. Or are they? I mean, 
I am having a good hair day. And finally, this awesome print of Salazar Slytherin and also these three jablonis if you like them, whatever. Next month's theme is traveling in the wizarding world and you can order yours today at lootcrate.com slash supercarlinbrothers. Use promo code Carlin to get 10% off your first order. Which I'm excited about because there's so many forms of travel. You could have broomstick or thestral or train or flying car. I mean, which one is your favorite? Let me know in the towel section. Also for the travel box, we'll be selecting one lucky winner to get a free Wizarding World Loot Crate box from the comments below. So make sure you leave a comment on this video. And again, lootcrate.com slash supercarlinbrothers. Use promo code Carlin at checkout to get 10% off your order. But guys, thanks as always for watching. Please remember to leave a like on the video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you'd like to see Ben and I's full spoiler review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, you can check out this video right here. Or if you'd like to take the Fantastic Beasts quiz and see if you can best me and Ben, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you. I will see you in another life, brother.